I don't get it. Well, that's the dress I was wearing when I met him. I told you about me. I oh. He liked me in that. Look, he's closing his eyes again. I, I think we ought to let him rest. Uh. <laughs> well, what's the matter? That's not the rattle, is it? I don't think so. I wish I could hear it again. Uh. <laughs> no. No, he's just clearing his throat. Oh, he looks awful. Oh, David, David. Easy now, Anne. Let him sleep a few hours. Well, do you think we ought to leave him? Oh, he'll be all right. Come on outside. I, I want to talk to you. Mm. Anne. Yes, Jeff? Anne, uh, a woman can't control herself entirely by her head. You've had three years with David, and whether you realize it or not, there's a bond between you that's not easily broken. Well, people get divorced. Jeff, I'm it's worried It's true about... that I think you'd be better off with me, but, well, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. Take back your promise to marry me and think about it for a few days. Jeff, I don't think a person ever existed as fine and generous as you are. Don't you think we ought to see how David's getting along? We'll only wake him. Well, I'll see if he's still asleep. I'll, I'll look through the window. Well? Why the... What's the matter? Look at him. He's sitting up. He, he's a faker. I'll kill him for this. Easy, Anne. Easy. Well, let me in. Anne. You wait out here. I want to take care of this alone. Oh, wait a minute. He's lying down again. Acting, acting. I'll show him some acting. And don't bother with him. Let me alone. I'll be right back. David? Oh. Oh, poor David. You're so sick, aren't you? Oh. David, please look at me. I'm, I'm so sorry for everything, darling. I've, I've treated you horribly. You're... Poor face is so thin and worn. Oh. That that scar on your chin, I did that. I picked up a bed lamp and I hit you with it. Like this! Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, that woke oh, you up, didn't it? My head, you've cut. What's the matter with I'll you? Tell you? You've been found out, you beast. I should have known it was all too convenient your being up here. Look here, the Anne. Big sympathy act, coming up here and pretending you're on a bat. I love you, Anne. Listen to me, David. You pick up and get out of here. I don't ever want to lay eyes on you again. You're just making a nuisance of yourself. Oh, am I? Yes, and get your hands off. Anne, me. I don't care what you say. I tell you, you're in love with me. I tell you, you're crazy. And I'm not going to give up till the last minute. This is the last minute. You're mine and you belong to me. You couldn't have anything to do with that, that pile of fried chicken out there. Well, that's what you think. He's twice man and we're going to get married. Okay. If that's the way you want it, I won't stand in your way. I've done all I can. But now I'm through. I'm all washed up. Go ahead. Marry the guy and I hope you'll be very, very unhappy. Thank you. There's only one thing I'd like to say to you before I leave. You're a spoiled, selfish brat. And I'd like to take you across my knee and give you what you deserve. Ha! I should have done it years ago. You just try it. Maybe if I had, you'd know how to behave. Get away from me. Put that lamp down. Make me. All right, I'll make you. Let me go. Put me down. Put me down. Do you hear? I'll teach you, young lady. Yeah! Yeah! Just what is this? Put me down. Oh, Jeff, he was going to choke me. He was. Come on, Jeff. Join the fun. Here, you take a lamp too, Jeff. I don't need a lamp. You'd better take it because I'm thinking of taking one. I forgive you, David. I forgive you for everything. Jeff, you're not going to hit him? No, Anne. I've always thought that violence shows a lack of character. You mean you're not going to do anything to him? Would you respect me more if I knocked him down? Who would I, you big blubber? What kind of a man are you? How could you be in love with a woman and let someone manhandle her? Hello, son. You ought to be ashamed. Hello, Dad. Did you have a nice day, Dad? You call yourself a man. Hello, Mother. You're nothing but a coward. What's this? You and your fancy ideals. Jeff, dear. That's what you are, a coward. Why, he's only half your side. I bet he could lick you with one hand behind his back. Jeff. And do you realize you're raising your voice? Certainly I'm raising my voice. Go on, I've been married to her. She starts at that pitch. <laughs> I never saw you acting like this. I, I thought you were a gentle type of girl. Very gentle. All you had to do was hold her off with a whip and a chair. <laughs> Jefferson, I forbid you to marry this, this woman. You forbid him to marry me? No, I am. Listen it's... to me, you stuffed shirt. Even a mouse has enough backbone to fight sometime. You know, taking your hat off in an elevator doesn't make you a man. You can teach a monkey to do that. And I'll take a monkey any day, whether he's a dipsomaniac or beats his wife in a lump of well-bred jelly. At a girl... But I'm not taking you, brother. Now let me out of here. Let me out of here before I forget I'm the lady. That was one of her quieter moments. <laughs> Anne, Anne, are you in there? Anne, I'm coming in. 
Get out of here. Hello. Did you hear me? What are you doing with those skis? I'm going skiing. At this time of night, don't be silly. You haven't even got a rear light. Take them off. <laughs> they're on and they're staying on. I'm spending the night at the lodge. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why don't you spend the night here? Not on your life, brother. Would you mind handing me that sweater, please? I would. Get it yourself. I can't. I've got my skis on. Well, then get a ball of wool and start knitting one. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Mm, very graceful. You look like a stork that just came in for a forced landing. <laughs> Good night. You're not doing me any favor staying here. I'd just soon you'd get out. Well, we see eye to eye. Wait a minute. You can't ski with your strap loose. I'll fasten it for you. Get away. Don't be silly. I'm just going to help you get out. Here, sit down. That's right. Well, now, just a minute. Now, put your feet up here. Good. Well, listen, I can't sit with my feet up in the air. Why? I think you look very comfortable. David Smith, let me up out of here. Can't you move? Of course I can't. My skis are crossed. Get me up out of this chair. Troublesome things, those skis. You're quite sure you just can't get up by yourself? I just told you. Fine, then we can talk a while. <laughs> David Smith, I'm warning you. In the first place, I ought to tell you that you're, we're still married. Mind if I take off my tie? Now, listen. Gimbel versus the New Pennsylvania Coal Company doesn't hold in this case since we're concerned chiefly with the Idaho and Nevada statues. So you see, I'll hang my shirt over here. Let me up! So you see, you're still my lawful wife. I looked up all this legal tangle, and that man Deaver was all wrong. Our marriage was and is perfectly legal. Now. I'm warning you, I'll kill you in cold blood. Someday when your back is turned, I'll, I'll stab you. Let me up! I'll scream! I'll scream, I tell you! Go on, scream! <coughs> Louder! Go on, bang your feet! See how you Go ahead, scream! But you're my wife! And you're going to stay right here whether you like it or not. How do you like that? My ski fell off. See that? You said I couldn't get away, see? My, my ski fell off. Well? Well, David, put it on again. And. <laughs> Two talented stars and two delightful people. Gave us a delightful evening in the Lux Radio Theater. And here they are, Carol Lombard and Bob Hope. Oh, thank you, C.B. And Carol, would you mind giving me an autographed picture to take home? I want to prove to the gang in my program that I really was in a play with you. Oh, glad to, Bob. How do you want it inscribed? Oh, just something simple, like to the finest actor in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, I thought it was for you. Do you really... <laughs> Do you really think you're Hollywood's greatest actor, Bob? Well, I'd rather not answer that, Mrs. Gable. Mm -hmm. Say, that reminds me... <laughs> that reminds me about the road to Zanzibar. What reminds you? Oh, anything at all, C.B. <laughs> I've got a great idea. Would you like to hear some of the best parts of the road to Zanzibar? But, Bob, I've seen the picture. Well, then, would you care to reminisce? Bob, I haven't seen the road to Zanzibar yet. Tell me, how is it? How is the road to Zanzibar? Yes. You know, I've always dreamed about moments like this. <laughs> well, I really had a swell time here, C.B., and I'd like to have both you and Carol come over to my program and try the Pepsi. Uh, 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 uh. Remember what I told you, Bob. This is the Lux Radio Theater. Oh, but couldn't I just say... W w but while you two are playing tag, I'd like to say just a word about Lux Soap. I've used it for years, and I think it's grand. It's such a gentle complexion care, and really a wonderful help in keeping skin smooth. Now, I may have told your audience this before, Mr. DeMille, but I haven't changed my mind one bit about Lux Soap. And you never will, Carol. Lux Soap keeps its friends for life. Uh, well, now, before you tell us about next week's show, C.B., couldn't I get in qu one quick mention of Pepsi? Now, Bob, Bob. <laughs> CB, my sponsor's listening. <laughs> what about it? Well, if I don't mention the product, he starts playing yo-yo with my option. <laughs> so all I'm asking is just to say peps. Yeah, yeah, yes, Bob, yes, yes, I understand, I understand. And next week in the Lux Radio Theater, we go western. With a current screen success and the original stars of the picture, Loretta Young, Robert Preston, and Edward Arnold. The play is The Lady from Cheyenne. It's adapted from Frank Lloyd's Universal Production, a rousing story of the Wyoming frontier and the days before women could vote, and how a beautiful school teacher outwits the whole state legislature to win the ladies the right to vote. You can count me in on the audience with a cast like that, Mr. DeMille. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Carol. Your performance was really wonderful. Yeah. Oh, CB, aren't you forgetting somebody? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if I am, Bob, I, I'm just being kind. Oh, wait a minute, CB. <laughs> I appeal to the women listeners. I leave it to Carol. Don't I, uh, don't I, Carol, appeal to the women listeners? Well, I appeal to the men listeners, don't I, C.B.? 
Well, there are 16 million kids in this country. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Hollywood has a word for stars like you, too. For lots of them. <laughs> 